Hello everyone, welcome. I hope you had a productive week. I hope you're having a great day and thank you for being here. Can you confirm if you can hear me well and if all is good? Can you see Harun? Harun? Are you a good boy? <laughs> he is a good boy. How are you doing, guys? Good to see you. And welcome to the stream. Today, we are going to import some assets, answer some of your questions, and play with the Unreal Engine 5. It's gonna be fun. All right. Uh, before we get started, I want to address some questions from the last stream and maybe even look at some Discord questions. And of course, I'm going to look at the chat. So let's prepare the questions. And if you have an important question and I could not answer during the stream, if you can comment on the video later, if like in worst case scenario, because I will be looking at all the comments and do my best to answer. And if you have a question, if you can put it between brackets, so question and then your question, that would be very helpful. Because sometimes I have a hard time reading the chat and focusing on teaching something useful and so on. All right. Thank you. Yo. Oh, look at that. Wow. Hello, everyone. Hey, Ashish Trilly Ward. It's good to see you again, buddy. Ala. I mean, John Marta, welcome, welcome. Hey, Chris, Squirt, Cooks, Raymond, welcome, guys. Michael, buddy. Uh, Michael, one of the questions I want to address is your question on the course. Google user we got? Well, man, Anil, I'm good, guys. How are you doing? How is everything? <laughs> All right. A new to the, uh, Felix. New to your channel, absolutely love your content. Thank you so much, buddy. I really appreciate it. I'm glad. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the gang and to the community. All right, first question I have. Is there any kind of UV randomization method in UE5? That's a good question, uh, Michael. Let me put this in the in the, my notepad here. And we're going to take a look at the UV mapping in general in uh, Unreal. They improved a lot on it. Pankit. Question. Can you please help with how to import from other 3D softwares? My UV map always gets messed up. Of course, buddy. Felix. Mali, welcome. Bosco Studio. Good to see you again. Google user. Question. Why Unreal Engine 5 is so realistic for interior archfiz and so poor or ultra complicated to make realism for exterior? I would not say that's true. Um, you see, the thing about interiors, you don't like, uh, I guess the main important thing we need to focus on when creating any sort of scene is looking at what makes the world we live in imperfect. So, um, outside there are like uh, if you just go outside and look around you will see so many so many things going on like little bubbles bubbles like people sorry um s extreme variants and variations in the textures um like there are so many elements to make in the outside however if you really want one of the best resources to to study on how to make exterior scenes. I think the sample city is one of the best examples. It's like, it's really well done. Good to see you, Yahya. Allah, welcome, buddy. I already signed up for the waiting list, Michael. Good stuff. Amazing. Okay. Okay. Let's get started. So one of the important questions, so this is for all Blender users. Um, so yeah, we had a chat here. So there is an official data math for Blender now, as you mentioned in the video. No. Um, however, we can export assets from Blender as JLTF and we can import the JLTF assets with Unreal Engine data math. 
and this would make it so much easier for you to export whether from blender or now i think we have in 3ds max 2030 2023 we have jltf support and yeah jltf i think it's like the new mainstream type of meshes it's really good so we had chat not really one of the best methods is to export your architectural meshes especially architectural meshes as JLTF. I didn't try JLTF as much with um, textures yet. Maybe we can take a look at Sketchfab, download the model and see how that goes. And we keep at it. Um, no, what, what is that? <laughs> so I'm stuck using Revit. So if anyone is using Revit, it would re like, there is official support for Revit and data math. It's like smooth. So yeah, we have data math for Revit, of course. Let me stop the music. It's uh, kind of hard to focus. And you guys can put your own music. How about that? So, yes, if anyone wants to learn Blender, I recommend it. It's free, it's easy to use, and it's 300 megabytes. So currently between Blender and Unreal and using a USD, Universal Scene Description is also one of the best ways to export things to Unreal Engine since it maintains the materials. Thank you, Pixar. So data math would be a better workflow. That's right. FBX is kind of the thing to do it, though it's just a dumb model. What would be great if there was an instance interchange format so that any software that create instances can send them to other software. Oh, that would be amazing. Imagine. Um, this is actually important when you have, for example, a living room or a dining table with like six chairs. I mean, uh, let's say whether in any tool, when you want, so I mean, with data math, instances are supported. So when you have like, it does not matter how many instance, instances you have. So I wonder, let's, let's try that with the JLTF and uh, Blender now. So today we're going to export some models. Sorry, yeah, export and import some models, take a look at the materials and get some of your questions answered. One of the other import questions I wanted to take a look at. One issue I'm having with my low spec laptop is it hard to running Unreal specifically, I get the video memory error. That sucks. The textures don't render. I had 4K, then reduce them to 2K. I change all kinds of settings in the laptop to get more of the video, but no luck. Any suggestions? This is for you, Robert. I, one of the suggestions I can um, give is if you enable in your project virtual texturing. So if you go to project settings and we go to rendering. No, where, where it was. So let's just type in the search virtual texture so engine rendering virtual textures so let's go yeah you this would help enable virtual texture support and if you're using gpu light mass enable these two but this could help hopefully and let's see what other questions michael i'm glad you signed up for the waiting list we should get started i think within the first week of may Nearly finished recording half the content. We're editing the content now. And I'm also planning on doing weekly exclusive, like on Google Meet or the Zoom classes that where we can speak to each other. I'm working on Mac. The automotive material pack is only for Windows. Does there, is there anything like that? Hmm. I wish I could help here. <laughs> I would ask someone hmm, I I'm gonna take a look at this I, w I wish I have Mark so I can answer this <laughs> okay some of the other questions I would like to touch on are are from now let's let's get just get into the chat and I think the YouTube comments I should make just separate videos on these so let's start with the first question before we start in the stream of the like importing assets so wait 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 yeah there we go first question i have is there any kind of uv randomization methods in ue5 and the second is kind of similar can you please help me how to import from other softwares my uv maps always gets messed up 
Let's talk about UV maps for a second. So I'm going to open also Blender. And here is Max. I mean, this sofa, if you add unwrap UVW modifier on this, we have UV, UV mapping will tell the, the tool we're using how to project the textures we have. So for example, textures, if we have, is this a sofa we're having? Yeah. If you have a sofa, table, floor, anything that you create from scratch, let's say, by default, it does not have any UV maps. And if you have textures like cloth, wood, brick, anything that you want to map on this object, we need to apply UV mapping. And UV map, the UV space, so if we add unwrap UVW, or now we're going to take a look at Blender as well, when we open the UV editor of this mesh, for example, you will see we have uh, the UV space here. This is not the best UV ink. It depends. So these meshes are like all collapsed together. You have the texture. So I wonder if we can go and preview that texture. So leather. Wow, that's too much. Let's put it on the side. Now. Maybe wood. Yeah, it's not extremely visible, but when you have this texture, and usually textures that you need to import in the engine are um, power of two. That's like, so if you want for uh, the engine to optimize things as it should. So we use like, 512, 1024, or 2K, or 4K. And this texture would be mapped on this area. And imagine, so actually look, dev. If you have an object and you want to apply that texture on that object, we have to unwrap that object. And there are, so if you have a box, imagine if you open that box, it would look like this. And that texture, the tiling texture, would tile across all, will project on the box, for example. And if we have more complex meshes or more organic meshes, then some unwrapping needs to be done. Now, thankfully, since we have Lumen now, like, I mean, if, we, if you want to bake your lights, we need to adjust this a lot. If you're using Lumen, no need to prepare our meshes for light maps because there is no light bake. So now we have slightly, slightly better understanding on UVs. So when we have a texture like this, we need to unwrap it. Now, if you don't have any UVs on your mesh, so let's perhaps make a copy of this. If Max will respond, where is the copy? I'm going to isolate and I will uh, just make things slightly easier to read and group. Ah, oh, there we go. Ah, oh, the reason we saw the maps are all messed up because we have so many objects selected at once. Now, I think if we take a look, this should look slightly better. Now, there we go. If your UVs are stretched, now, in this case, I believe we're doing fine here. So it's, let's see if we can select, let's go here and let's select uh, this guy. And let's press F2. If we move this, the texture is going to change. So we have a texture here. And when we unwrap our meshes and prepare them for mapping, you basically, it's okay on UV channel one to have like overlapping islands. For channel two, if you're baking our lights, this is not good. We should pack our UVs. So to, this is in max. You can simply add an unwrap UVW modifier. So I'm going to make a box here. It's easier to unwrap and maybe we can cover unwrapping in another stream. 
So I'm going to add Unwrap UVW modifier right now. By default, this box have these seams on all its sides. And if you open the UV editor, we can see I'm going to assign a texture here first. So let's assign this leather or wood. I don't know if it's visible. So let's see the wood type texture, how, how it looks. View image. Yeah, it seems the, because it's wood, like it's organic texture, it's kind of hard to see like what's going on, but this is obviously stretched. To work better with this, we open the UVW editor and we do mapping. So the easiest way to map things, if in Max, for example, if we just do flatten mapping on such an object, you, we cannot do this on, uh, on a sofa or something. We need to define the UVs. Uh, so the first rule is that like for the texture to map correctly, it, it should have the same. So if you do mapping, flatten mapping on the selected uh, mesh, you can see now after we do that operation, how this face look exactly as it is here. So this is some of the things we need to pay attention to how we uh, do our seams and the scale of um, our objects. So if you do this and let's see. Ah. <laughs> it's kind of hard to select. So basically UV mapping, that's how it is in a nutshell. You have this face and you can map it as you like on your texture. You can repeat it, you can tile it. So it's completely up to you. Now, when you send this to Unreal and you, if you open the UV maps, this box, if you apply the texture on it, it should look exactly like this. And in Blender, I'm not expert in Blender, but let's see. So there we go in Blender. If you open, go to UV editing. If you have this such a box, you can see how this is mapped out for us. So if you create monkey and click tab, this is also mapped for us. So it's, uh, you can apply almost any texture and it will look fine. But if we don't have any UVs, so let's see if I can make quick. Face color. Uh, let's go to UV, no, not, not the UV editor, the geometry shader editor, and let's add texture. And let's click on material preview. Now, because we got rid of the UVs, things it's doing its best. You know what? I want to export this as JLTF2 now, so we can import it in the engine. So let's make another monkey. Su Suzy, Suzanne, what is the name of this? Uh... <laughs> Oh, this mesh and let's assign this material yeah I think I didn't do anything to the UVs here ah if we click now reset yeah there we go this is a UV uh, an unwrapped object as we can as we saw here so I'm gonna in tab in edit mode you can see this is how this is unwrapped on our surface and this is the same object but with no uh, with no unwrapping on it like it's I just deleted the UVs and you can see how the texture is extremely weird on here so if you want for your meshes to look right UVs UV mapping is one of the things that you should learn so you can unwrap your meshes and apply your textures correctly now 
before we get into UV mapping in Unreal Engine, I'm going to try and export this as JLTF. So I'm going to going to export and I'm going to go JLTF2. So that's how I usually export my assets from Blender to, to Unreal. And let's go to Unreal here and make... I'm just going to put it on the outside. Export this as JLTF. We come back to Unreal, File, Data Math, File Import. JLTF is supported by default if you start from an ArcViz template. Is this going to crash? Unreal. Okay, this is not good. Ah, I can't. Let's close the window. Unreal is not helping. It does not want to let me select my mesh. So I'm going to cancel. I don't know why this happened. It's weird. Okay, library. Let's open that project. And let's be patient a little bit. Let's keep restore. All right. Data math. If you don't have the JLTF importer uh, enabled, you go to plugins and just type here JLTF. You can find JLTF, uh, Data math JLTF importer. And we have also JLTF importer. So we have two options to import, uh, import JLTF files. I'll make a new folder here. So let's start with the with the data math importer file import and let's select our file so this is the noise monkey i'm gonna make a new folder here call it test and click ok and enable this i'm interested in seeing the textures is it going to export this with the textures Um, what happened? Why this became dark? Ah, because I don't have a sun. So let's find that monkey again. Hey, look at that. And that's how you import, you export many assets and many textures and that good stuff. If you export as JLTF, you can import as JLTF. I wish I discovered this like two years ago, <laughs> but there we go. For Blender users, I think this is one of the best ways you can export your work to Unreal Engine. Now, I like, ah, it's called Suzanne, the monkey. For mapping in Unreal Engine, so now we're going to talk slightly about uh, UVs. I don't know of a way that we can randomize UVs yet, but we have like really cool UV editing tools in uh, the engine. So if you go to modeling mode and you scroll all the way down, almost all the way down, we have UVs. We have auto UV, we have unwrap, we have seam ID and so on. Now, I'm going to make, yeah, actually, let's just click auto UV here. Give it a few seconds. Prepare some shaders. Based on the complexity of the mesh, we will see like this checker map and you have all these options to play with. So if we play with the patches and actually we can click on preview UV layout. So if you click here, you can see that this is a texture and this is all the little chunks that the auto unwrap UV is generating for us. So we can apply this. So if you click accept, I mean, we would not see massive difference, but it's the same as removing UVs in Blender. 
So that's an auto unreal. So let's try this again. And let's see if we can play with some of these settings. So we can change the angle threshold. Is it doing anything? Or it's taking some time. Repack about packing our UVs. Can change the texture resolution. Can we go? Ah, oh, there we go. Nice. I'm just sometimes when I discover a new tool, I just like go through the settings and see how oh, there we go. Checker density. Ah, oh, this is for the preview. Can original. There we go. So patch builder, UV atlas, and X atlas. We have three methods to to do an auto unwrapping in engine now, which are very cool. I think this one is nice. Yeah, this one is kind of way much better than the first uh, patch builder. X atlas. So many improvements in Android Engine Five on the modeling tools. By the way, click accept. If you got an asset with no UVs, you can unwrap that in Unreal. Um, so to answer your question, Michael, I would randomize UVs in the engine by repeating this process multiple times on the assets uh, I have. So that's for auto, auto UV. We also have unwrap. Yeah, so also we have unwrap. Let me just close this. And we can also enable the preview layout. What is the difference? It's the options we get. So patch builder. Nice. Existing UVs. Island generation. Auto rotation. UV layout. Repack. Normalize to bounds. None. Normalized word. This is way too small now. It's repeating like a million times. Normalized scale. And we can have also polygroups. Polygroups. If you go to the up to poly model, poly edit. So these are the polygroups. Every little red. Um, so let's see, can I select triangle? So every one of these is like a polygon and it's also somehow a polygroup. And when we are packing our, uh, doing auto unwrapping, these are also taken into consideration. The polygroups. Oh, we have, this is also new here, planar projection. Nice. One of the things they also fixed in the UV mapping is the projection mapping. So I'm going to go back to Blender real quick. And I'm gonna create like a cube, scale this, just randomly, just like so. And I will go to you to the UV edit of this and select all these faces. Zoom in. Yeah, let's export this as it is. As, as it is. The only thing I'm going to do is just to apply the scale and the transforms. And you can see the UV mapping here is not very good. So I'm going to override the JLTF file I, I exported earlier. So I'm gonna click on this little nice monkey. And by the way, there are some settings here that you may need to check out. So the format, I'm using JLB. JLTF separate. We have the textures can be exported separately. And JLTF embedded, everything in one file. I think all of this would work normally. If you were experiencing any crashes, I would switch between these. Include, transform, Geometry, apply modifiers, if you have modifiers, send the UVs or not, and so on. And animation. This is very cool. I'm going to override my file. I'm going to come back to the engine. 
I'm gonna press Ctrl B on this asset on the Suzanne. Go back one step, select my JLTF file, just right click and click reimport. And yeah, click import. And just like that, hopefully, yeah, there we go. When you modify your asset in uh, in Blender and override that JLTF file, just like we do in 3ds Max, when we go to File, Export, then Export, and then select a data math file and override that file and click Reimport, we can do the same in Blender. I love it. So, what's weird here that this box have flipped faces. Now, we can go to Blender, and in Blender here, I believe in the view, we have a way to view how the face orientations, I can't remember where that is exactly. So, I won't spend 10 minutes looking for it. Yeah, honestly, I can't remember where it is. But that's important when you want, like, if you have a big scene, and you have this, um, you get this problem, there is a way to preview like all the flipped normals on your uh, meshes. And see what's wrong and what's not, so you can fix them. Mm, we can take a look at it later. But let's say, hey, it's easy fix in uh, Unreal, how can we fix it? Let's go again to the modeling tools, triangle select. We can select one of these faces. If you don't want to select everything manually, and we have an option called flat fill. If you select this, it will select all the asset, all the faces for you. So flat fill, and then we can simply flip the normals and click accept. Let me just reduce the sun. And there we go, this is fixed. The second thing now, because of the way this is mapped in engine, if we try to apply a texture, so I'm going to get, just get any random texture, assign it here, you can see... What's this? We need to flip these, so let's do that. Ah. You need to select the mesh and click on triangle edit, that's important. So let's select these faces. Yeah, let's do flat fill again. Something is wrong. The flat field is not working as supposed to be. Let's check on our mesh in Blender. Yeah, it looks fine. Okay, so it's okay. Modeling tools, poly edit. Let's select all of this and let's flip and click accept and let's go back to triangle select select these two faces here and also flip well just the space so triangle select select this guy and flip and that's how you do it now if we compare this texture this guy and its scale, you can tell that this is this is supposed to be way much smaller, right? So if you open, uh, let's copy the asset ID. So I'm gonna select, just open a notepad, copy the name of the asset and then select this guy. This is the asset ID. Every Quixel asset have an asset ID. If you search, if you copy this and then go to bridge, and then type that asset ID, you can find that exact asset. This is one of the ways you can share like what you used from Quixel library with your colleagues, right? And when you click on any texture, you can see this is repeating one by one meter. And if you go now to Unreal, now we know this is repeating on a scale of one by one meter, the scale of this texture. Let's go to now to modeling tools again, and let's go to UVs and let's go to project and we can change between four methods on projection, plane, cylinder, box, and X map. Honestly, what is this? Exponential map. We can try this later. So let's go to box. And if you set 
the dimensions of the box to 100 by 100 by 100, that box, you can see that now our texture is repeating as it's intended on our um, on our mesh here. One thing we I want to take a look at though, do you have any tiling? No. Yeah. So auto unwrap. We also have unwrap. We have projection and we can edit the seams. I didn't try this yet. Yet seam edit right. Add UV seams to mesh. So if you try this on a mesh like this, so. Show wireframe, hit. Can we export an object with no seams? It's okay. So, can you please help with how to import from 3D softwares? My UV maps always gets messed up. Felix, I hope. Uh, and you also, Michael, I hope that this helped you a little bit in the UVs. So if you want to randomize your uh, your assets, I think repeating the unwrapping multiple times. I'm not sure if this is the best time, if the best way to randomize UVs. I'm going to take another look at this later. But this is one of the ways I would do it quick and fast. And if you export, the reason I wanted also to cover the mapping tools in Unreal, like so. These guys, is if you have um, a project, like I see 99% of SketchUp projects, for example, they got no UVs, so you can assign UVs directly from here. And the other method, if you don't want to assign any UVs, is try planner mapping, but that's for another topic. Now, we finished the first two questions. Let's read the chat and see what other questions we get. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I just move the chat up so I can see it. And let's go. I hope this helped, Michael and Felix. Mali, Bosco. Question. Why, Andrew? Yeah, we spoke about this. And my man, thank you. <laughs> It's all about your assets. It's all about assets you use. It's just about the techniques and experience. The bath is not yet known that much. Uh, this is the answer or like one of the answers for um, on how to create uh, exteriors. Go now, go now one, go now one Lee from Indonesia. Welcome buddy. The rest of you guys, where are you watching from? Raymond, how to proper manage texel density for models that will go to Unreal Engine from any 3D software? That's a good question, buddy. Um, I usually use texel density of one by one meters. So I don't know if I, let, let me try to explain. So I'm gonna open one of my, my first Archface project in uh, Blender. Um, you want to keep texel density consistent across your meshes because you don't want to to go to Unreal and in Unreal you don't want to select like ma different material instances and play with with the tiling on every single mesh. For example, if you have multiple um, meshes that have different Texel density, you will need to chain the tiling on each of these meshes. So you want, if you want to make your life easier, slightly, if you open back Blender, and if you go to Material Preview, I usually, in my tool of choice, I assign a texture like this, and I also as, um, Add a box, just a normal little box that is one by one meters or two by two meters, and I assign the same texture where, just like we said in um, Quixel, so when you when you know the size of your textures, so where where should we go? So many windows. 
I always use the texel density on uh, 1024, like the resolution of my textures and one by one meter, because this is very, it would make your ArcFizz projects easier to work with because 99% or most assets in, in um, textures are like one by one meters or two by two meters. So it's easy to make textures larger or smaller. And in a tool like Blender, I select all my um, assets like so, and I open the UV editor. And that's, oh, this is a texture. And I um, unwrap all my, my, uh, my meshes and I do either quick uh, cube projection. There is a tool for, I'm still learning Blender. That would make all of these share the same size. So imagine if you scale these like this and you have now like I'm trying to remember the shortcuts what you want to do is to have the the same I, I would use a grid material because it's easy to see and I would make all my UV meshes assign that material on them and then scale them all in the same uh, way so they all have the same texel density so if you want to do this i would like i'm ran randomly selecting these you can do cube projection there we go just by doing cube projection you can set the cube size so what is the cube size usually it should be one for one meter and you should be good and in uh Mark that to 100 centimeters, to 100 centimeters, to 100 centimeters, to 100 centimeters, and I do the same to all my project, to every single mesh almost, except for meshes that I buy from the marketplace like this, because they just come uh, unwrapped for me, and they got their own textures as well. So, yes. However, if I'm modeling these on my own, I would follow the same, uh, the same uh, process, but not, but you want, when you have so many meshes like this, if you want to apply the same texture on other mesh, it might be tricky. So that's where then, okay, we need to set also the textile density to my, to our 3d assets. I hope this helps uh, Raymond. I'm trying to answer this on top of my mind. Marco, hello Yahya, will you have another anterior ArchFizz tutorial which can be purchased? Uh, yes, but not tutorial, like a full course. At the moment, we are working on recording. I can show you. Let me quickly do this. But yes, short question is yes. Uh, there should be a link in the description to join the waiting list. Um, we are, I think, in the first week in May we should be able to start releasing the tutorials I'm working on. And it will be full introduction to Unreal Engine 5, full introduction to materials, to lighting, to, to exporting your meshes, to prepare your meshes, and all the good stuff. And it, this is actually the project, the case study project for the new course. If you are already a member of the Unreal Masterclass, or if you already purchased the product on Gumroad or the Academy, this is a free update for everyone, because I promised you guys last year when Unreal Engine 5 releases, I'm gonna re-record everything, and that's exactly what we're doing now. So we will start releasing the content within the first week of May, and I look forward to seeing you there. Everything will be on the Academy website, VR Division Academy, and to quickly do something perhaps, so let me, YouTube, the waiting list, if you go to this video or the previous uh, stream, I'm going to put a link for you guys in the chat. There we go. Join the Unreal Engine training program waiting list. Just fill this 
And I should add a notepad on what you guys want to learn, like little note. Let me let me do that now, actually. Actually, let's make it for another time because I don't. But here's the link for anyone who is interested in um uh, in um uh, knowing about the like if you want to join sign up for that waiting list and we will reach out to you once we start releasing the tutorials okay question what is the best way to what is the best way to hard disk management i have an ssd an hdd and m2 disks in my rig i have os on ssd projects on m2 and assets from quicksil and hard disk is this a good approach i would say yes uh there won't the best way to to manage your hard disk or your assets is where you make it easy for you to find your assets to find your textures and uh, organize them in a way that is convenient i'm gonna show you an example here i'm trying to create a new library on my laptop so for example i spoke about this a little bit in the last stream so what I do, this is a new library I'm building. I am still thinking be between dividing the assets either on rooms or like, what are they? Still thinking about it because lights can be used almost anywhere. Um, so I have, for example, seats. In seats, you have armchairs, sofas, and like all sorts of other assets. And the same way in bedroom, you have beds. Yeah, so the best approach to organize your library or your disk is if you mind map it. And what I mean with that is I use a tool like Miro. And in this tool, I mind map my projects. So for example, when I start a new Android Engine project, I, uh, I unzip a file and that file contains something called project name. And inside project name, we have sources, production, and final output. And imagine if you do the similar thing to your library. So if you have a library of assets or materials and blueprints and so on, I would do this exercise where I open a tool like Miro and map my computer, my files, and I would ask myself questions. What type of files I have? What type of files I use a lot? What type of files that should be easy to access? And I would just do something similar here in Miro. So it's a process. And it should not, it should not, I forgot. It's a process and I forgot. Stay hydrated. Everyone uses, let me show you the example I talk about. So projects, project template, sources, production, final package. Before I create this here, before I organize anything on my computer, I would really like mind map it first and then um, organize. And I do the same also for my projects. So for example, when I have a new project, I also map the steps needed for this project. So for any Unreal Engine architecture projects, for example, there is phase zero where you do planning, you set the milestones, and so on. So yeah, this is me going away from the topic, but it's like free advertisement for Miro. <laughs> I would use the, such a tool and I would map my desks and I would map my files. And when you have like this high level or bird view, you, it would really make, it will just open your mind on how you can organize your folders and assets. So I hope this is helpful for you, Raymond. Where is the chat? Did I close the chat? Restore. Yeah, I think I closed the chat. I sometimes stupid. Okay, Marco, will you have? Yeah, I just answered this. <laughs> Cooks, I have made a test video from what I have learned so far. Of one of my office project, I will soon share it on Discord. Drive link. I got so excited with Lumen that I forgot to learn how the render, how to render steels. Welcome to my life, Cooks. Lumen is dope. So guys, we are having like we have this nice little community on Discord. Come join us. 
we have a chat, we answer questions, and actually you need to talk a little bit about cinematics. I can talk about some of the tips I have. Let me add this to the questions. And yeah, please join us and share your work. So we have show your work in progress, finished work. Here's a section for, uh, for questions. And don't forget to pick your role. And especially this role, if you are like, if you got 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, pick Unreal Helper. And every time someone have a question in Unreal Engine, so like, hey, I need help in this and that, you describe the problem you have, and then you can tag Unreal Helper. So everyone with this role will be notified. And yeah, guys, let's help each other. As for crashes, so maybe two little uh, things we can discuss. So today, your boy Ashish 3D Word, shout out to you, buddy, shared with us solution to little problem he have. So when he updated his Unreal Engine project to the new release, like UE 5.01, he is having this issue where he, when he opens his map, wait for it, it hurts, you know, Unreal crashes. So the way he solved it is by recompiling, uh, verifying the engine files and to verify the engine files, if you open Epic Games Launcher, if you go to library and go here and click here, verify, this will take a while, be patient, but this should hopefully solve some of these crash problems. I hope so. The other crash problems I'm struggling with is maybe because I don't know if it's the GPU or, or um, RAM or something is stability issues i would say so crashes are crashes guys this is the windows i don't know like <laughs> cooks please do share your project with us all right follow-up question using rhino i just want to the tile size to be correct whenever i try and apply material in unreal engine it often just ends up a solid color or blurry mess that's a good question uh, felix to fix this in, uh, in Unreal, it's just like we did earlier. Where is it? Where is Unreal? Yeah, there we go. So let's see. I'm gonna assign just another texture on this guy. Let's make it slightly sunny and let's open the light, select the directional light, make it way much less intense yeah let's switch, switch to unlet mode when you when you when things look blurry so i'm gonna slightly replicate this if i can when in rhino i'm not sure if there are uv mapping tools but what's happening when you are expert exporting your meshes it's basically this is maybe what they look like right felix or just, as you said, completely solid color. To be able to, to fix the mapping on the, on the meshes you get is enable the modeling tools. Usually they are enabled by default. If they are not, go to plugins and type here. We have actually a couple of uh, things we need to cover. Just to, in the plugins, search for model. So we have modeling tools editor mode. We have static mesh editor modeling mode. I didn't enable this earlier. And we also have UV editor. I also didn't try this. That's uh where is this? I enabled it on another project, but I didn't think there is there was anything different. So anyway, the what you need to to enable is the modeling tools editor mode this is the guy and if anyone got some time to test this out this guy and the uv editor let's check it out but let's open the uv editor like let's let's restart the engine but before we do that so uh felix if you select your mesh that does not look right go to uvs and go to project and under project you can select a box or depending on the type of mesh and when you select the box that box will 
automatically expand to the scale of your mesh like so you can see here we have dimensions and you can change the dimensions to meter by meter by a meter so you can have proper uvs all right i don't know if the this is um very visible and of course you can change the location of this also seem to not be able to set up live link would be so convenient thanks again for taking the time to answer i need to install rhino uh, to to test out the live link however as far as i know the live link should work um out of the box when you install so i don't have rhino but i have sketchup maybe we can try so when we open a tool like SketchUp, SketchUp, <laughs> by the way, we will reach 27,000 soon. Let me check. I think we need like 10 subscribers or something. So guys, can you share the channel with your mom, dad, family? <laughs> Subscribe. And leave a like. Okay, is SketchUp on or not yet? It does not want to open. Okay, uh, Felix, let's leave like live link for another time. I will, I will uh, install Revit, test it out, and I wanna see. I don't think SketchUp is opening. Ah, oh, there we go. So let's open one of these projects. I'm using, uh, anyone knows a good website where I can download scenes that I can um, demonstrate how to, to make tutorials on. So I like, I know, there are, I know there is 3D Warehouse. Are there similar websites? Okay, so for my SketchUp users, by the way, I read a lot in the questions that you are unable to find data math here that's because in new updates on data math for sketchup now we have data math when you install it on sketchup you have it like a window floating window like this and if you don't have it i think let me see right click can i close it yeah if you don't have it and you install data math right click on your toolbar and enable data math and here you have uh, synch synchronize with uh, direct link and toggle direct link. So I think there is something similar in Revit to toggle the direct link. So if we toggle this now, and if we go to, where is it? Where is Unreal? I can't see Unreal. It's like, ah, oh, there we go. What are you doing? Ah, because I have so many windows and small screen. So if you go to Unreal, direct link, you can see that I have SketchUp and I can select this and I can set a location. So I'm going to also save it at test and I'm going to click import. And there we go. Now I can select if I want to move the house. Let's just do this and let's select here and where is it? Yeah, there we go. Can select the main data math actor and you can move the project around as you can see. And whether I hope the same in uh, Rivet, but when you want to change something so let's do this and let's make it like this right so here's the change what we need to do is just click on this button synchronize with direct link give it a couple of seconds and when we come back to unreal engine it's already importing the file so where are you at unreal oh my god <laughs> 
there you go so basically that's what direct link is it's um will import the changes you're doing without the need to go here and like click re-import and as you can see we have now that, that like this uh green icon that direct link auto re-import you can disable it or enable it it's 100% uh, up to you I have the same in Revit. If it's not, let me know. I will download it. In all cases, I have to download uh, Revit because um, some work, actually. So I hope this is helpful, uh, Felix. And maybe next stream we will have uh, Revit. And maybe you can teach me some Revit too. Deal? <laughs> Jens, greetings from Cologne, Germany. Welcome, Jens. Kiran, love from Nepal. Love back to you too, buddy. Robert, welcome. You didn't miss a lot. We just... Actually, you missed a lot. We spoke about Blender. We spoke about UVs. We spoke about... Not a lot, but you can rewatch the stream, Robert. And it's good to see you again, buddy. Thomas, have you tried Papillon JLTF export from 3ds Max? Does it work as seamless in Blender? I, d I don't have the new 3ds Max yet. I didn't try exporting as JLTF from uh, from uh, Max yet, but I do believe that it should work as seamless as Blender. However, for Max users, we have DataMath. Unless DataMath is making problems for you, then that sucks. But DataMath file import select the 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 file you're looking for and it will import. Um. I will try that. So let me add that to the note. And let me see, do we have export as JLTF from here? So max export. JLTF. Yeah, it's not here yet, right? Mm, I need to update my max so I can try JLTF. But I data math is my preferred type of workflow for Max, but still, the more methods we have to export and import, I think the better. What I want to try actually is the USD format. I installed Omniverse exporter and now we have USD. And I think by default in the new Max we also have USD export. I'm not sure. But let's try let's try something. I'm interested. So I'm going to DT and I'm going to make a new folder here called USD. Call it test, USD test. Prab, export all visible. Yeah, let's export everything. So names. Ah, we cannot have duplicate names. Okay. Rename everything. Sofa. Group, ungroup. Let's see what are their name. Yeah, that's weird. Let's uh, S underscore this sofa and numbered and base number select all and now it should be different. Let's delete this box and let's pick the name. I'm gonna do this. numbered and let's try exporting again and now it's exporting as usd and in, i never tried importing usd type of files yet it's weird i know but let's go let's do it so i'm going to plugins first to check if i we, we need to enable anything so usd USD importer, add support for importing the USD file format into Unreal Engine. Let's enable this and let's restart, restart the engine. Let's click save. And while we're at it, let's try exporting this apartment also as USD. So I'm going to type H, Alt H to unhide everything. It's really fun to, bl to learn uh, Blender, by the way. And I'm going to click file export and export as usd universal scene description go here and let's go to my temp folder usd yeah 
UV maps, normals, materials, and all. Click export USD. And let's go here. Now, if you want to import USD files, I think all we need to do, click add and import from here, just like normal import. And if we find our scenes, here, all files. Now we have additionally USD, USDA, and so on. But I think Unreal Engine crashed on me again. Yeah, there we go. Now, God damn it. Uh, I don't know why this is happening. This is the second time today. Let's open the project again. And let's close this. And let's do this. And... Yo, M Design. It's good to see you, buddy. Long time no see. Habibi. Okay. Noor. Yeah, yeah. How, how are you doing? I'm doing well, buddy. How about you? Can you please tell us how to make playable characters in Unreal? Give me a second. I will do my best to answer this. But let's start with the USD. Let's continue with USD. So this is for you, Thomas. Thomas. Um, actually, USD, JLTF. JLTF, once I update my max, I'm going to try that. But it should work as seamless as uh, in Blender. Now let's try importing USD files. So I'm going to File, Import into our game. Or you can right click import into our game, or you can go to create menu and import content. So it's up to you. The main difference, if you click import from here, it will directly open the browser and the same here. But here you can first set the location of where you want to save this and you can then import. The more you know. So data math, USD, and here is a test. And let's save it here. Geometry, skeletal machines, animations if there are, level sequence, materials and textures, USD purposes to import. You can import a lot. I need to export this more. Let's click import. And let's find that sofa. Ah, oh, we need first to, to, um, this is not what I exported. <laughs> it, we exported this. I'm just checking on the UVs on these guys. So. Ah, they all have the same pivot as well. Interesting. Yeah, I need to export uh, to explore this more. As you can see, the textures, we will see the textures, but why will add it like, hey, this is annoying you if you're exporting your project and like you want slightly better control. You can go to the modeling tools. So this is this is how we can fix the pivot in uh, Unreal. So if you go to the modeling tools and you have like a mesh like this where the pivot is somewhere else in the world, you can simply go to where we have attributes. No, transform. Yes, transform pivot and you can set this to the button and it will place it exactly in the middle center bottom of our object so that's that i want to explore usd exports more um this did not export any textures and maybe because vra materials are not supported with usd format so I wonder, one of the things I usually do if I want to save myself some headaches is um, converting V-Ray materials to standard materials. 
this could work and to do that type vray to standard material converter you can find almost any script this is one from 2009 let's see if this works click drag it converted this to standard material now it's not the best conversion and this looks funny but that's okay and we can select the test what do we have move to origin oh by the way I just want to check on the pivot of these meshes because I was I'm interested like why why we had like this here and it was also reversed ah look at that uh, when I go to scale you can see here this is minus 100 so we need to reset X form on our assets before we export them so now this hopefully should be better let's see And let's try importing this again. So I'm going to make a new folder here called test1. And import. And import. And import. And import. All is good. Let's click import. Give it a couple of seconds. static meshes and materials we still don't have the texture that sucks but sometimes that's what it is now all of these because they have the same pivot they come like so and that's not very useful so you need either to collapse this as one mesh or or we can set their their um, un unify the pivot so i'm gonna set the pivot here to zero 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 on all of these guys so that's one way if you want for some reason to export as a usd format and let's go back to the engine and let's click i don't know why the textures didn't export import but we will see sooner or later so here's a test let's make a new folder here call it test 2 click ok and click import and wait Ah, there we go. If we click all these guys and blah. Test two test. Well, that was not supposed to work to do, to happen. Ideally, ideally, if Morphe's law does not happen these should export like this but usd exports is slightly new to me so i'm gonna check it out in future or uh, yeah i mean another stream like off stream to see what's uh, happening however i'm interested like why blender didn't export this let's export you something smaller from here so i'm gonna make a new scene and uh, file import fpx and go to my library so today we're gonna import some assets from here Go to sofas, open that sofa. Ah, oh, by the way, maybe things are not working as intended in uh, 3ds Max because I'm using the USD exporter of NVIDIA Omniverse. 
So maybe that's why. Once I update my Macs, we will figure that out. Anyway, going back to Blender, I don't think we have any textures assigned on the FPX files that we buy from uh, Diamond Sevia, but let's 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 check it. Let's check that out. Uh, actually, we cannot do, but I believe they are missing. Or not working as intended. So we have mapping. And we have the wood texture. And if you want to open. Can I preview the wood texture? Ah. Oh. Let's go material preview. Let's look um, very interesting. Anyway, let's file export this as we discussed. We can export this as JLTF. It will look good. But now let's try USD. And let's go to our temp folder. So DT underscore temp. And let's sofa test visible animation hair UV maps normals all export USD could not copy texture from ah yeah something is wrong with the texture so let's open Did I open the right map? Ha, huh, there we go. I will try to export again. At least like one of the textures. Actually, also we can try the the um cloth. File export USD. DT temp sofa test export. Okay, I need to take a look at this later, but let's go back to Unreal and let's come here. Uh, import content. Click OK. And sofa test.usdc. It's a slightly different from what we have here. The test from Adobe Dimension USD something. We have these MDL files. The more you know. This is very exciting, guys. New things I'm learning together. We're learning together. You know how amazing that is? A lot. Slicking part. And this is. Test. We call this sofa test, right? Wow. Wow. <laughs> These are massive. <laughs> so let's uh, undo and let's come back to Blender. And we need to assign, not to assign, we need to, let's delete the camera and the light. One. Next, we need to select all, control A, and apply the scale, location, and rotation. So all transform. It will mess up something for some reason. Good to know. File, export, USD. But you may have noticed that with Blender, with the USD, USDC importer from Blender, we were exporter from Blender, we were able to have the textures too. So that's exciting. And let's come back to the engine. But I prefer JLTF and DataMath because Every time we need to click import and then find our file and then um, open it and set a new folder for it and give it a random name. Not random name, don't do that. 
It's uh, for sh tutorial purposes. One sofa test, static meshes. There we go. But because we applied all transform for some reason, I don't know why this is happening in Blender, but we have these like flipped meshes, right? So what we can do, modeling tools, we can either fix that in Blender or come here, um, triangle select. So wait, select this mesh and click flip, click accept and GPU crashed. Hello? Ha! Oof, I thought the whole computer crashed. Let's click OK. Feels sad for a couple of seconds because the engine, uh, <laughs> that's what it is. DXGI error. Yeah, interesting. Guys, give me a second. I need to. I don't need to say that on stream. Second, be right back. Yeah, I'm back. I am back. Let's come here. Skip restore. And yeah, that sucks because we didn't save our assets. We imported it will uh, get rid of them. So we need to import again. So I'm going to click import. Click import. Maybe put my picture here. Let me know if my picture is annoying you or like if you don't see things. Okay, I wanted to check on the material on one of these uh, meshes. Like what does it look like? So we have metal, we have leather, we have the cord. And this looks funny. USD preview surface. So we have um, default materials for USD type of files. That is interesting. Yeah, that's uh, not supposed to be normal. That's why this is a pump map. So we need like either convert this into a normal map, for example, or use the not on this material, but the normal map from height map, the material function where we connect our height map here and the then scalar for the normal map intensity another one for the UVs and then we can uh, kind of be able to use these type of textures as for for bumpiness or normal map but I recommend just having normal maps it's just really better so that's okay now 
before I read the chat, let's do one final small test. I'm gonna open this scene again in uh, Max. So this little sofa. So let's do that. And I will export with data man. So let's do this and let's file, export, export. Let's go to our data math folder and type here sofa and type sofa. Actually, let's not type sofa, let's just copy the name of the sofa. DT, DT. And select data as math, click save, click OK, give it a few seconds. We get some error messages. Let's do my favorite thing and ignore this. Let's open Unreal, data as math, file import, and let's find that so far. And let's just save it here, click OK. And there we go. Yeah, it comes, I like data math because it works, but one of the things we need to tackle later, I need to check the chat is if we compare the export to the sofa we got this is rendered in v-ray or corona renderer and this is what we the exact same mesh we get in uh, unreal and that's because of so many factors so many elements i would not say data math is great in converting v-ray materials to to what we have here it's, it's doing its best but to demonstrate slightly what's going on if we open this like, yeah, there we go. This is the material, right? Four material IDs. And if you open the ladder, so let's open the slate editor here. And let's do this. So actually they are simple, so that's good. The wood texture should be very simple. The metal is also very simple. The cord, like it's something small, it's also very simple. I wonder how this will look in data math. And finally the cloth, the leather. And this is where things get tricky. We have the diffuse map. We have something called the fall off um, node in Max. We have leather and the color. And I think this is doing some fall off between both. And the map composite. So this will look kind of interesting in uh, data math. And then we have reflect. So we have leather output and then we just have a normal map. And then we have the glossiness. And this is where things will get even more interesting. So I think between reflection and glossiness, we will have two additional parameters connected to specular and metalness. The simpler your textures are in 3ds Max or any tool of choice, especially when you're using render engine, the easier it will be to fix your materials in Unreal Engine. So like these nodes, they they kind of exist in Unreal in their own way as material functions. So let's take a look at how these looks in Unreal and let's go to the chat. So if you open the ladder, you can see we have the normal maps we got from Max. So we have this uh, leather normal map. We still have, we have them now in uh, Unreal. And we have this from the composite layer. We have leather and the same texture twice here. So this is the same texture twice, right? Yes, it is. And if you come back to Max, we can see this is the texture that is repeating twice. It's the leather, right? And I think it's mapped here five times. Focus on this number five times. 
OK. And you can see this texture is connected to two different to two different inputs. And this is why we have it. We have two of it here. And the tiling. The tiling. Let's open the master material now. I don't think we have. Yeah, there we go. We have the texture kernels, and this is also tiling five by five. And here's the interesting thing. We have so many of these, and ideally, you want to fix this material. Ideally, you want to have much less of these, uh, much less, is that even English? Less nodes, like the best materials in Unreal, I would say, are the simple ones. And the first thing we need to do every time we open, uh, export our materials from uh, Max or any tool, if you need to pay attention to metallic and specular. So we need to turn these both off so we can have like the same normal uh, settings. And so let's see. We have fall off, we have fall off, we have Fresnel, we have composite layer. This is sofa diffu diffuse. And this is the composite layer. And then we have blend. So this is the material function. This blend screen mode. This is what we have in Max as a composite. And it's connected to diffuse. And it's got three textures. And if we come back here to Unreal, we got the blend and it's connected to two textures and then one. And the other texture is also connected to two textures. So we have three textures and all of them are connected to base color. What might be simpler if we take the two textures we got, these two guys, and also take the, the mapping, the UVs, and just connect this here as well. So we'll slightly reduce what we have and then just click M, multiply node. Then do this and do this. So we're multiplying this texture with this color and let's connect this here. And let's call this color tint. We may need to find better ways to tint this color. And let's see, did we forget anything? We have linear interpolation, Fresnel, vertex normal. And maybe we can play. Yeah, let's click save. And let's come back to the material instance and let's click on color tint. And we can play with the color. All right, and you can imagine you spend slightly more time on uh, recreating your material. It will eventually look like our reference, uh, the, the asset we have from here. The other thing we need to work on, or you need to work on, or we need to work on, I'm going to do that after I do the chat, is also in a similar way, the roughness map. So let's take a look. I'm going to open the max and let's take a look at what we have here. So we set for, we are using here reflection and glossiness. And one of the best, like one of the main reasons I love um, the PPR workflow, physically based rendering workflow. It's so much less confusing than all these options. Like things. Let me just show you, show you this. PPR, Unreal Engine. What does physically based mean? Physically based shading means we approximate the light. Is this the page we want? This is the page we want. No, this is not the page I want. Actually, this is it. Anyway. 
Physically based rendering means we approximate what light actually does as opposed to approximating what we intuitively think it should do. As far as I remember, when I used to use V-Ray on 3DS, like in, in the, the, let's keep reading. The end result is more accurate and typically more natural looking. Physically based materials will work equally well in all lighting environments. In addition, the material values can be less complex. This is very important. I honestly don't understand why materials have to be this complex. Still, they can be that complex, it's okay. But, like, not for a sofa. And interdependent, resulting in more intuitive interface. These benefits are applicable even for non-realistic rendering, like thanks to Pixar and Disney. So... And the main parameters we care about are the base color, the roughness, the metallic, and the specular and mainly now the base color and the roughness because metallic is either our object is metallic or not so it's zero or one and specularity all objects in real world have specular to it so by controlling these get we can get the results we are after in uh, in the engine here anyway i wanted to make a point but i kind of forget Yeah, coming back to Max, like, things can be simpler if we are using the physically based rendering workflow in Max or like the material inputs, physical materials. Uh, I remember a lot when I was learning V-Ray and Max like 10 years ago that we used to play a lot with the glossiness and the reflection and change things and so many up i mean it's good we have so much control but for a noob like me it's complicated okay so quickly in unreal we can touch slightly a little bit on the on the roughness map and the normal map so let's see normal map do we have a normal texture yes we do before that, yeah, let's come back to roughness. So roughness, we have, let's, can you go away? Multiply, lerp, roughness, alpha, desaturation, and then this. We can simply see, just do this. And in, uh, I think this is a glossiness map. So it should be inverted. In uh, Unreal, so in like the physically based rendering workflow, these values here, they take uh, these inputs, they take values between zero and one. If we input the zero is black, one is a white color. So if you input colors that are near zero here, as you can see, they will uh, they will be smooth. Uh, smooth, smooth surface and if we increase that to one it will uh, it will be a rough surface and if you ask what is the roughness um, imagine if you zoom on a micro level on a, on a surface so this is a smooth surface this is when we have a value of zero and this is where we have a value of above zero 1.5 whatever you will see the type of reflections are different. So when we have values close to zero, we will have regular reflection, right? And immediately when we look at this texture or this sofa, we see like so much uh, regular reflectiveness here. It's kind of weird. Can control it. Or we want to increase the roughness basically. So we can introduce lerp node or we can also try and add one minus to this so one minus i don't think this will work in this case but if we add this to roughness this will invert the colors of this texture because this is a glossiness texture it's not roughness texture so we simply inverted the colors of this texture i said it twice i know but this immediately looks so much better than what it was uh, before yeah Okay, let's read the chat. 
And uh, if you found this useful, leave a like, guys. It supports us a lot. Habibi. You guys are Habibi. And it's time to read the chat. I've been talking a lot. You need to stay hydrated. Where is the chat? I keep loading the chat. I feel like a chicken nugget. Where is the chat? I closed it. I... Oh my god. There we go. Alright. So I believe I was reading Felix. I answered this, right? Wait. Yeah. M design Noor. Yeah, yeah. Hope you're doing well. Thank you, buddy. I read this and now here's the answer. I know it's been a 20 minutes or something explaining an another uh, thingy, but thank you for your patience. So can you please tell us how to make playable characters in Unreal Engine? Let's uh, quickly do that. So now in this project, if we press play, technically nothing is happening. So what we can do, we can go to content browser. We can click on add and we can click on add future or content pack. Now, you can add a first person or you can add a third person. Let's add both. So let's start with third person. If we add this to the project, it will add two folders for us. It will add the third person template folder and it will also add a folder called meshes or like characters actually. So the characters, we have the UE4 characters and we have the new UE5 characters. What we need from here, the third person, we need the blueprint and we need the blueprint uh, third person game mode. Now, if we go to settings and if we enable word settings, we can go to game mode. And as you can see here now, game mode override is set to none. This means if you press play, there is absolutely nothing going on. If we change this though to third person game mode, which is this one, so you can either search for it from here or you can simply just where is it can click and drag so let's uh yeah actually we need to search for it we need i stupid i can't uh i thought we can click and drag hey we can click and drag nice so if you click and drag or search for this and now we press play we can play we can jump but none of the, my meshes now got UVs. Uh, sorry, um, uh, collisions. And to add collisions, I made this extremely short tutorial that you can watch, guys, later. Yeah, this one. How to enable collisions in Unreal Engine. I show you how to enable it on one mesh, and I show you how to enable it on many meshes. All right? Um... F11, let's add the other game mode. So if you go add feature or content pack, let's add first person, which is obviously what we want for uh, ArcFizz projects. You can simply, simply here type here first person game mode. And now if you press play, we are in first person mode. Okay, it's compiling shaders. It's okay. We don't want the hands. So let's see if we can get rid of that. So blueprints, we need PP first person character. If you open this blueprint. Here are the hands. You can simply either hide these in game or just delete them and if we compile the shader, the blueprint, if anything that has to do with the hands is here, we get problems. But yeah, so we can now simply click play. And there are no uh, hands to, to catch a gun. And you can also jump and oh my God, look at Lumen, how amazing it is. I still can't get over the fact that we can import projects immediately and change whatever we want without the need to bake any single light. It's amazing, right? 
I like this bunny hopping. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. Okay. Next question. Let's go, baby. I hope I I uh, this is helpful, Noor. Abdul Ma'moon Ibrahim. Welcome, buddy. Hello all. Thanks a lot, Yahya, for all the great information you pro um thank you. Ah, Habibi. Squared. The problem with auto unwrapping is getting something like wood grain textures to align. Hmm. Um Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. I would use a tool like a DCC tool like Blender or Max to align my textures exactly as I want and then export to Unreal. Um I would look at the modeling tools here and the unwrapping tools as tools that would support us to work on our projects after we import our finished projects. So if you have a mesh that you forgot to edit or if you have flipped faces. So the purpose of these tools is to help you stay in engine as much as possible. I would try to achieve what you're trying to achieve within these tools. I mean, that's the only way to learn them. And if it didn't work, then we go back to Max or Blender, fix the UVs and wrap as much as we want, like based on the results you are after and then export again to, to the engine. Or if you got lucky or if you have more knowledge or if these tools, they are improving a lot. Eventually, I imagine a day where we are going to do almost everything in engine. I hope so. I really hope so. So squared, I really hope that we would not have this problem in future. Felix, trying scale in auto UV and still not doing anything with the material on the 3D model I imported from Rhino in data math format. Let's take a quick look at that. So here we have Suzanne. And here we have auto unwrap and the scale. So I need to understand, by the way, I wonder if we have 3ds, what Unreal Engine Modeling Tools documentation. Modeling Tools Editor Mode. Let's switch to UE5. Yeah, this is for the API. Mesh. These are some news. Ah, this is the API again. I wonder, yeah, I think it's too early to have documentation on the modeling tools, unless if you, one of you guys knows if we have documentation for the modeling tools, that would be very helpful. But like these are ex in extremely early phases. Anyway, the scale. So we have unwrap here. This will uh, change how your UV maps align next to each other. So it's not the scale. For the scale, I remember we can change the scale. I'm certain. Existing polygroups. Let's reset this to the way it was. How? Oh, normalize scale. This is what we want. So let's add none. Normalize to bounds. This is kind of cool. Normalize to word. You may need to play with these settings, Felix, in the UV layout. Change to normalize to bounds or word and see how that could helpful could help you. However, if you ask me, I would recommend going with project. And under project, I would choose like uh, a box and then set the box to the dimensions I am after. So as we discussed earlier, because of the textile density and whatnot, we in ArcViz typically we use like 100 by 100 by 100 units. And as you can see, 
you want to make this much larger you can set it like to 20 by 20 by 20 and now the scale is different so that's one way but let's try to answer your question again so auto uv let's enable preview mode so we have now this menu gonna so texture resolution set this to one to two wow that's massive so let's set this to 4k this is for the textile density so this is not what we want UV Atlas ha UV Atlas we have now my bad X Atlas the checker density let's do this I wonder if the checker density is going to do anything so now we have like this let's take a screenshot and let's do another unwrap so auto unwrap and let's change this to like 40 ha it's the same so that's only for the checker right right so set this back to 1 20 max iterations Auto UV Island Stretch This is for the islands, nothing really changing about the scale But um, the thing about unwrapping is going to preserve all our um, Geo inside this UV space So once you scale your uh, like set the unwrapping the next thing you want to do felix is creating or editing your material and by the way this material came from blender right with the jltf um, importer i love it it's very simple and very nice so let's create small scale little um, um, nodes so to do that if you click click on you then hold left mouse but click hold you and left mouse button you will add texture coordinates and then if you hold s and add click you will add scalar parameter and then when you hold m you will add multiply node so we can multiply the Texture coordinates, the UV spacing of this with the scale. So I'm gonna set the scale to. I'm gonna keep it at zero and notice what will uh, happen, uh, Felix. And now I'm gonna connect this here to UVs. This will uh, the texture will go away now, which is similar to the problems you were having. Um, the reason when you are exporting your 3D meshes from Beam tools and when you assign a texture and that texture looks like a solid color that's because there are there are no uvs so once you do your initial uv unwrapping and then assign the texture so usually the texture is set to one like this you should be good now if we save this and if we open the material instance which is this one notice we have a new uh, parameter and it's called scale so this could be helpful for you now if you change scale set it to 5 this will scale 5 times if you set it to 500 this will scale 500 times and if you set it to 0.5 this will uh, just get bigger so here on Suzanne now we can change the scale All right. So I hope this is useful, Felix. And where is the chat? Did I close the chat again? No, I did not. 
thank thank God. <laughs> Abdul Mamun Ibrahim, I wanted to ask you. I am in the process of setting up a new PC to use Unreal Engine smoothly. Any recommendations on the GPU? I should buy something under six hundred. Honestly, the good thing about uh, GPUs, we are almost like now. I was reading uh, an article a couple of days ago. Like this is, as you remember, guys, all of you. Like we got period where we have like the GPU pricing is like what three times um, more expensive. So GPU prices are going down. I would maybe either wait a little bit or um, because of the mining exodus, basically. But what do we search for? 600 GPU for 600. I would recommend getting NVIDIA GPU because of the hardware ray tracing. So that's one. And let's see. 1060, as far as I know, is a good GPU. Of course, if you can get higher, the better. But let's see what is the price of this guy. In what is the price of 1080 Ti? Fourteen thousand Turkish lira. I don't think there are new Ti's. Then Ti price. Ha, seven hundred. I have been using 1080 Ti on my desktop for the past many years. I think it's a great card. So if you could increase your budget slightly, then I would get at a minimum of 1080 Ti. If I would, if you have the options still to get a uh, 20, not 2080, but you get the RTX cards, like 2060 or something. I know they might be a lot above the budget. Let's see what what their price, but. Um, because the GPU is how huh, really okay. Get RTX 2060, 2070. Let's see what do we have here. Yeah, man, this is the stuff. Hardware ray tracing with Lumen works am amazing, like uh, really so much better. So I would get like yeah some of these cards, RTX 2070. What about 2080? Yeah, that's uh Are you serious? Is the price of 1080 Ti is the same as this? Google. Yeah. <laughs> I am a noob when it comes to hardware. Not a noob, but a noob. Yeah, actually a noob. But yeah, I would get an RTX card 2060, 2070. Um so I can you need to focus on having as much as VRAM as possible. The less VRAM you get, the more crashes you're going to experience. You may not be able to, to work as intuitively. What is the word? Yeah, less VRAM will prevent you from being creative. Let's call it that. Will prevent you from like... Um, going crazy on your projects and experiment with stuff so i hope this is useful uh brahim abdul mamun okay thomas have you tried the cell bombing technique they showcased in the matrix matrix yes sir and the first time we learned about the cell bombing technique is from uh what was the name of uh Medieval game environment. So the cell bombing technique, I think they first introduced it in the medieval game environment. And yes, cell bombing is amazing. And I also do have on Gumroad. So let's do this. I have to update my uh, my uh, Material now to Unreal Engine 5 and all, but I'm using the same technique also on the auto landscape material here in my uh, You can find it on Gumroad and I learned that from Unreal Sensei 
before I learn it from here. And there is a cool tutorial with a bad thumbnail. I should change that thumbnail where I talk about cell bombing and like other techniques to create nice um, exterior environments. Cell bombing for the win, Thomas. Tiling can go away. Top right, squared. Um, check your WhatsApp. Obeida is sending me. Yes. Let me check on something. If we got the... So Discord needs some updates, but guys, we're looking for creative people to work with us from 3D artists to interior designers to perhaps artists and all. We're opening positions slowly and we're also finding a way. So there is like we're looking for contractors to work with, like freelancers slash contractors. And we're also looking for full full time members. We will be making these announcements and the form submissions on um, on the Discord server. And I, I think we should open a new section called jobs in the server. Tell me what you think. But for now, that is in the community section. This is from 12 days. We're looking if any of you guys we have a so there is for us, there is for some of our partners. Keep an eye on the news on maybe job section soon. And here there is a form. So if any of you is expert in Unreal Engine 5, we are looking for visualization expert in UE5. First name, last name, etc. You can find that on uh, the server. And keep an eye on the channel here today. We're going to post a position for a contractor. Some, I'm looking for someone who is great in interior design to help me with the uh, project. And yeah. Um, Thank you, Obeda, for reminding me. Okay. Top right. I didn't understand squirt. The problem with anti unwrapping is getting something wood, grain, textures to align. I'm trying to connect this one with this one. Top right. I don't know. Help me, brother. <laughs> Helix. The preview in UV editing looked great. I hit accept and it goes back to wrong. Oh, the preview. So the preview in the modeling. If you can join us on Discord and share some screenshots of what's happening, Felix, that would be nice. Um, are you following the same steps I was doing? So modeling, and then you do all the changes you want to change and then accept. Hmm, it should not go back to wrong. But there is a law called Morphe's law. It might be challenging you today. If something can go wrong, it will go wrong. I'm sure you got this, Felix. Gonna one. My Unreal Engine 5 keeps crashing. I wonder why. Honestly, that's for so many reasons. I mean, my Unreal Engine 5 keeps crashing too. But for me, I know it's uh, crashing because of my... Uh, my GPU, I would guess, is not like... I mean, yeah, if the GPU is great, but I have so many movable lights and sometimes it just like it takes all the VRAM. Some of the guys today, they had experiment experiencing Unreal Engine crashes and they uh, solved the when they open a new map and they solve their problem by verifying their uh, content. Sometimes it crashes because there are sh some strange shaders complying. Honestly, there are so many reasons. And the thing is, performance, stability, uh, these things, hopefully it would crash less and less with time. But I wish I could have an answer for this, um, Gan one, Gana one. Um, it crashes more often when I activate it Lumen. Ah, my VGA card is 1080 Ti. That could be why not enough uh, VRAM. So maybe if you take care of the texture sizes, of how many lights you have, if you work most of the time maybe in the unlit mode. Yeah. Um, 
That's what it is, buddy. Jean, watching from Singal. Welcome, Habibi. My man. Robert, how do you duplicate a mesh in the modeling tools and how do you make them unique? That's an amazing question, Robert. So I think now by default in uh, the engine. So let's see. Here's Suzanne. And let's make a couple instance of Suzanne. And let's go to the modeling mode. And if we select this, let's see. Let's go to triangle select. Let's select these and let's clear, right? Sorry, let's delete. Now, watch guys, if you click accept, this will apply on all the other instances of our match. So I'm, I'm really glad you asked this, Robert. So if you want to avoid this, what you need to do is when you see even here, so let's press Ctrl, Ctrl Z multiple times. What you need to do before you modify your mesh is, so there are actually a couple of updates. Let's start with the simple things. So let's say you want to adjust this. When you click this mesh and go to the modeling tools, we have here under create mesh duplicate. So when you click here, you can keep these at default and just click accept. And now if you want to change this, so I'm going to select these and then I'm going to click delete and click accept. As you can see, these are not affected because we made a duplicate of that mesh. So you do that from here. Now I'm going to work on this guy. So these three are still instances. Let's see if we can change anything. We have an option based on the operation we are using to create a new mesh. But I can't remember where is it. Actually, it was under Boolean. So if you do this, and if you do this, select these two, for example, and we do mesh cut or mesh Boolean. Under Boolean. How it's 4 p.m. And how have we been here for two hours? <laughs> anyway, under Boolean. Output object. This I hope they add this to the other um, operations, but you can select a new object or you can first or last, but a new object. This is, of course, not a great Boolean here because of the type of the mesh. But if we search for this, this is now a new mesh. So good question, Robert. The short answer is mesh duplicate here. When you make any instance, you can click mesh duplicate, click accept. And now if we press Ctrl B, we have two of that meshes now. So this is unique and this is unique. Next questions. Is there a free full ArchFizz interior from 3ds Max to Unreal for beginners that is enough to depend on myself? And does Unreal Data support Corona? Muhammad Ali. So free full ArchFizz interior. I have this class that honestly it needs an update. I don't know of other channels there are, but if you go to, to our channel and go to playlist, we have here about, uh, this is for Unreal Engine 4 though, but many of the things here are still applicable in Unreal Engine 5, except for light baking parts, but I would still learn and watch light baking parts. And ArchFizz Unreal Engine. There is us. Yeah. And yeah, you need to search. And I will work on something soon. Full guide. It is actually in progress, but still, like, there is so much work. I wish I could do a full guide. But when I say soon, I think like next month in May, that should be. Until then, I would learn by trial and error and watching some tutorials and um, what, what is the word? Yeah, sometimes it's not possible to find everything for free online. 
there are paid tutorials. There is our Unreal, uh, Unreal courses, but free, you need to keep searching, honestly. And there is the playlist I just showed you, Muhammad. And there is also the Unreal Online training and other resources online. Right now, there is nothing on top of my head, to be honest. But I have plans to create new videos. As you can see, we're not making new videos going live because videos take so much to edit. Like, it's um, such a mundane work. So for your question on Unreal Data Mess supporting Corona, yes, it does. However, there are some um, materials. Like, as far as I know, Corona new physical material is not supported yet. So to learn more, you go to t.math, uh, documentation. You can see what is supported, what is not supported. And if you want to understand like how data.math really works, I think the documentation is a great place. And let's see. I think Corona 7 is not yet supported. So here we have a physical material. I was reading a couple of weeks ago, someone having this problem. So the materials that are not supported, you need to create them on your own, Muhammad. Follow up question for HDD management. I'm thinking about more, I'm thinking more in the performance side. Ah, okay, Raymond. Um, The like you, we have the HDDs, then we have the SSDs, and then we have the NVMEs. The faster you can uh, get, what is the? I don't have any tips here to be honest, but I would change my HDDs to SSDs or NVMEs to to write and and uh, read faster. I don't think. This is a great answer, but not really as much into hardware, uh, Raymond. However, if anyone have any tips for us, please teach us, guys. Allah, I have a problem when I put the glass material on the cube imported from 3ds Max. The sun rays don't penetrate the glass material. This is a great question, Allah. So for now, for some reason, translucent surfaces in... Uh, Unreal, as you can see, are not supported for for shadows. This sucks. The way around this is that you should separate your windows <clears throat> from your... Uh... So here, if we have click here, we have a window and we have the glass frame and the glass itself. So what we should do in this scenario is going again to the modeling mode and then select my faces the window faces so this one and this one right then click on separate can i select multiple How without the need to click shift, just uh, click here. Now let's click separate, click accept. And this is now separated, this window. You need to go to the details panel of the actor. So in this case is the, the window. And search for cast shadows and disable this that's one of the workarounds i know it's not the best and like you compare this to to how uh, path tracing should work like we get slightly darker kind of shadow here compared to here but i hope this is um something that will be fixed in future however for now to work around this, you need to disable cast shadows. And the reason I separated my window from my mesh here, because I still want this shadow. 
right? So I hope you found this useful a lot. Anarchijx, how do you find assets that have the same fidelity as Quixel? Okay, that's a good question. Depending on the assets you're looking for, but one of my favorite. So Quixel assets are photogrammetry assets and most ArcFizz assets are like normal poly modeling, but high quality assets. I love Diamond Sevia. They don't have a massive library though. Like it's a small library, but it's really good. There is a 3D sky and so on. However, the problem with all these assets, they are made for ArcFizz for tools like uh, 3ds Max and therefore Corona. So there is still manual work you need to do. Um, in manual work, I mean um, opening the material of your uh, surface of your mesh and then change it. So someday we will have perhaps, I don't know, Anyone knows any good reference, uh, any good websites for high quality assets that can share with us in the chat? That are really high quality as Quixel stuff. Mr. Ru, can you share the template of your project map? Um, yes, but which one, uh, Mr. Ru? Are you talking about this project in particular? <clears throat> or you were talking about uh, Miro and the type of um, when I start a new project, the this template, so new project like sources, production, final package, and so on. Let me know. And yes. So I'll take a couple of more questions and then I have to go soon. Need to get back to work. <clears throat> Why models get scaled randomly while exporting via data at Meth? Is it because of units? Amul Kadam, that's a good question. So one of the things that we need to pay attention to in our tools of choice is the the so let me do this and let's set this to 10 and then set this to at the first glance these two guys they look the same and they are the same but there is main difference between them. This one, if we go to the scale settings of this, you can see here it's natural, it's set to 100 by 100 by 100. The next cube here, it's the exact same size from outside, but, sorry, oh, shit, <coughs> sorry. But the scale on this cube is set to 10. When you export this with data math, it will look fine because data math will take this into consideration, like the scale here. But if you export this with tools like FPX and whatnot, it will uh, be really big. So what you want to apply on your meshes, like a rule of thumb before you export is in a case of 3D S marks, reset X form and reset selected, it will add a modifier here called X form. So you can just uh, select the mesh and search for X form, add this. And now when we go back to scale, you can see here we have the number 100. So now this is supposed to have the exact same scale everywhere. And this thing, you see now we deleted X form this just got like big. It's not supposed to look like this, right? In Blender, what we do, so if you have a mesh and 
you have a cube and usually we chain the cube we scale the cube we do this and that and like we were just doing our thing right in uh if we export this to Ma to unreal with like with these scale operations it will look weird so before exporting this to unreal you need to press ctrl a and apply the scale of this mesh once you do that then you would not have problems with the with the randomly random scales on your meshes and also since we're talking about units just make sure that every one unit in your tool of choice equals one centimeter because in unreal engine here every one unit is one centimeter so in max for example we go to customize unit setup system unit setup you go to one unit equals one centimeters and i believe in blender i'm not certain but if we go to the scene units set this to metric and unit scale set to one i believe and that should be that should be like how it should be that should <laughs> that's how it should be and yeah so just make sure that your unit setup is set correctly i'm not sure if this should be on one or point one i need to check roadmap mr Ru, you asked me about um the miro board wait 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 ha can you create template of the project roadmap ah ah yes of course now i got you omi I can explain that also a little uh, slightly. So let's open mirror again. And let's go to here. No, not here. Let's just do this. Unreal project. <coughs> Sorry. It's not perfect, still work in progress. I mean, uh, I was teaching this, but vase zero is the pre-production vase where you define what this is project about, what is the end goal, how we're going to do this project and so on. Vase one is the production vase where we do the 3D modeling, the planning, the 3D block out and so on. And of course, sourcing assets if needed. Vase two, depending on the project, like here you can see retail and whatnot, because it's just a template, is where uh, you polish your project and prepare it for delivery. And basically final product, phase three, is where you have the deadline defined, the cost, the, zero, the result, and so on. Is this what you asked for, uh, brother? Mr. Ru? If yes, I will uh, make this into a PDF perhaps and i don't i'm sure it's on discord why models get scaled yeah i answered this felix there is a museum and showcase level in that package in which package you mean um not picasso get out of here give me a second There is this art, fashion, automotive. Uh, is this what we're talking about, uh, Felix? So type here art. There is this from Epic, ah, from Dicky Gun Studios, where we have this for free. Good stuff, but I think this is for Unreal Engine 4. I need to translate this. So. Let me open Google Translate.
I, I can't read this, but I'm I'm glad you're enjoying this, buddy. Welcome. How can I pronounce your name? <laughs> Cooks. I still cannot figure out how to migrate lights. I am kind of... I'm sorry I didn't answer this in the last stream. So let me tell you this. Migrating lights or moving lights between Android Engine projects and more. So let's say you have a project. So this is an Android Engine project. And let's make either... Let's open a new project just for the fun of it. So let's say content example, right? And if you have, uh, there are the base actors in Android Engine projects like the lights, um, the sun, and almost all of these, the post-process volume, the sky atmosphere, like um, all this stuff. So let's say I want to copy this exact same setup to my, uh, to another project. All you need to do is to put your stuff in a folder like this, let's say. So I want to copy these, right? I want to direction light, exponential height, fuck, the post-process volume, the sky atmosphere, and the skylight. Just click, select them, like so. Press Ctrl C. Literally, that's it. Press Ctrl C and open your other Unreal project. So let's say here. And I'm going to select these guys, all of these. I'm going to delete them. So we don't have any lighting in the project, right? And now let's just press Ctrl V. That's it. And we have the exact same uh, setup. So if you want this uh, skylight, uh, sorry, directional light in your uh, other project, you just come here, Ctrl C. And let's say you want the camera too, right? So Ctrl C, go to your other project and press Ctrl V. And you can see we got the rectangular light and we got the camera. So that's that's it. That's it. <laughs> good question, uh, buddy. Cooks, good question. I hope this is useful. Felix, deal. But it is, it is Rhino. <laughs> yeah, I'll get Rhino soon. Michael, I have to go. 2x speed to catch up at the same time I was making tea. Thanks for... <laughs> My pleasure, man. Data math is a bit problematic when using Corona, though. That's right. Uh, there is still a lot of support that needs to be done uh, on uh, Corona. And we hope in the next few weeks and months that we see more and more support. And that's exactly what will happen. I'm certain. Yugi, it's good to see you, buddy. Welcome. Ashish, how can we manage shattered mesh in Unreal Engine from SketchUp? Shattered? You mean like um, chaos? Like destruction? Shattered mesh. Honest. Um, you mean like mesh that is separated in a way? So I'm not sure if I understand, but um, can we break? Detach. You're not talking about uh, fracture, right, uh, Ashish? You're talking about like when you have mesh or vertex that ha huh, split no ha huh, like this so when you're working in um, in sketchup and you have like meshes like this or like faces like this is this what you're asking if so you will need to wield your vertices. So now we have a vertex. If you move it, we can see in this area where we selected this, it's things are not... We have like duplicates here, and this is not good. So what we can do 
is selecting our meshes or like all the mesh and then merge or um, yeah merge see we have removed four duplicate vert vertices now after we did merge in blender or weld in 3ds max but in sketchup honestly i don't know if we have like such uh, mod uh, modeling operations so let me know if i answered your question uh, ashish as there is a plugin cyanide for relinking materials in 3ds max are there such plugins for relinking materials in blender and unreal so in unreal i don't think uh, such solutions uh, exist because in unreal we need to to import our textures either with a tool like data math or manually because these textures let's do this all your unreal engine assets in a project are dot u asset and in the import process unreal will uh, change all these assets into dot u asset dot u asset dot u asset and so on so that's one the next thing uh, so yeah like 3ds max and other tools they uh, they work with data that is outside or across your computer like textures they will reference this data as like something like a path so in max for example if you go to where is it project no not project reference asset tracking manage links you have like links and whatnot that will uh, take these textures from same in blender but in uh, unreal all the assets you want to work with must be inside your unreal project must be imported so unfortunately there is no solution like cyanide uh, with unreal um, when you're exporting your assets from uh, your tool of choice the the assets will be imported with like the 3d meshes the textures and everything else will be imported together if it didn't import it means that there is something wrong with the material that you may need to check onto as for blender honestly i don't know because i'm relatively new to blender and i still not um very good in texturing things in blender um yeah i wish i could help here jose usd works better than yeah i hope i hope this is useful uh, design lexic and let's move on to the next question did i pronounce your name right jose usd works better than the send to unreal plugin what is the send to unreal plugin um are we talking about blender here or uh, what tool send to unreal download our are you talking about this ah send to unreal so this is not good as far as understood it's also outdated this plugin is actually very good but i felt la that jltf is better and if you ask me uh, jose i would use uh, jltf is my favorite now when it comes to exporting assets to blender from blender to unreal um if you can elaborate more on what is sent to unreal plugin if you sh can share a link or what that plugin on what tool i can maybe provide better answer um I think USD still needs more support in Unreal because we had some problems with textures and whatnot. But yeah, maybe it's just me who needs to learn more about USD. But I would use JLTF. If it's possible for you to, to use JLTF formats, I would always go with JLTF, at least for now. Robert, I have a video memory issue in UE5 when I use a post-process volume. Have you run into this? 
almost all the time when I'm working with my, uh, sorry, when I'm working with my other projects, I, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I exper experience a lot of uh, crashes as well, but that's because I'm placing lots of assets, lots, lots of uh, lights and high quality textures, and also on the post process volume. <laughs> sorry, I uh, increase my uh, settings a little bit sometimes. All these stability issues and performance issues, I hope they will be solved in the development cycle of Lumen and Unreal Engine 5. So, patience and uh, optimization. How to activate ray tracing with software? I don't have RTX, so I can't use ray tracing from hardware. So, good question, Guan Guna. Guna one, good question. So Lumen is supported across all computers, across all GPUs, and it uses something called software ray tracing. <clears throat> and it u it uses <coughs> it works first in, in two methods, like something that has to do with screen space, and then something that it uses the mesh distance fields to calculate the global illumination and whatnot. So if you start Unreal Engine 5 projects by default, Lumen is already enabled with the software ray tracing. But if you're converting from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5, if you go to project settings and go to rendering here, then go to global illumination. If this is set to none, set it to Lumen and it will change all the settings for you, right? So this is the software ray tracing here, like to enable Lumen. Now, assuming if you have an RTX card, you can go to hardware ray tracing and enable this. And this is what software ray tracing only. Ah, I don't want to use this. Use, yeah. Let's see if you can see. You see the difference? This is just software ray tracing. And this is hardware ray tracing, like both together, actually. There is like some difference in the GI and the reflections and reflections. Well, reflections only. So we're nearly done. Wow, so much chat. Okay, have you tried resetting X form? Set the pivot to zero 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 usually work for me. Yes, um, that's that. And if you are exporting with data math, there is no need to set the pivot to zero 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 because it would, um, depending on the location of the object, it would export it and place it exactly where it is in 3ds Max. And resetting X form is I always do that on. Um, like I have a checklist on uh, when I am importing or exporting my projects. Well, when I'm preparing my projects to, to Unreal, I should actually work on that checklist so I can show it to you guys. But one of the things I do, I always check, for example, if there are uh, duplicate vertices. I check if there are flipped normals. I check if there are the textures are linked right. I also check for the layers I have and of course I check for the scale and if there is something wrong with the scale I add an x4 modifier and so on so yeah <laughs> Yugi what's good website to get free archives materials quicksell bridge is not working for me oh why it's not working so a good website to get free archives material Hmm. I'm trying to remember. So there is a website I know of. It's called um Anyone knows any good websites? I know we got Texture Haven.
texture haven so yeah two that i can remember now on top of my head we have texture haven so if you go uh, search google for texture haven you can find these we have like 250 textures and not many of them are for uh, arcfields and there is also a website for a friend of mine called shirttextures.com he makes very nice uh, textures and that you can also check out if anyone knows any other websites please let us know okay so Control shift left click in node you can preview only the image ah let's do that let's do this Control shift and left click nice thank you Control shift and left click let's go I think this is not working because the this means that the texture is uh, missing right so we need to open this and like locate the leather yeah I need to find something to find missing textures for uh, blender that would be nice Oh, how can I close this? I opened it by mistake. Thank you, Jose. Michael, get a run. Thank you. We'll finish that later. My pleasure, man. Thank you for hanging out. I'll see you soon. 3D Render, hello from the office. Hello, hello. Technically, you are working. We are learning Unreal Engine. And yeah, hello. I think the best way is to personalize by yourself. That's Yugi. For a question earlier thank you buddy i what is the good website to get free archives materials yes i would uh the best way is to keep using google and asking us asking the community and asking everyone until you you make your list of nice websites Marco, are you experiencing crashes whenever you bake in Unreal Engine 5? It seemed to be experiencing at work and at home. We'll join Discord. I, uh, it's been a very long time since I baked anything in UE because I'm always using uh, Lumen. But <clears throat> this can happen for many reasons, depending on the scale of the, the project. Uh, the scale of uh, your texture maps, the light map UVs, and they're very high, and other factors. But if you join us on Discord, talk a little bit about your scene. Maybe some of the guys will be able to help, and I will do also my best to help. Ravin, need help about packing a new A4. Materials missing after packing, what to do? Um... First, thank you, uh, Droid. Thank you. And as for this question, honestly, you need to to Google it or to to ask the community or on Discord. I saw this problem today on our Discord channel, but this is the first time ever I see it. Are you the same guy? So I think you are the same guy or maybe there's someone else having the same problem. I don't know. Anyone have any ideas on this? So we have here one of our guys after packing, like we have this weird stuff. It's, uh, it's annoying, I know, but I wish I could help. <laughs> Taji, welcome, buddy. Ravin, I wish I could help, buddy. I would migrate maybe the project to another project. Um, you need to keep looking. And one of the best places that we can ask and type about our problems, if you could not find a solution in our, in our Discord, is the Unreal Engine official community, Unreal Engine forums. 
So if you go to forums.unrealengine.com, you can type based on the specific place about your problem and share some screenshots and like, uh, yeah, maybe here you can find a solution if you could not find um, somewhere else. Hey, Vamzi, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I need to know how to export asset with texture materials and import with textures in Unreal Engine. So Vamzi, I spoke so much about this in the beginning of today's stream. If you can go back and watch it, you will learn everything you need to learn on how to export and import and textures and whatnot. But long story short, based on uh, the asset you're using, or sorry, the tool you're using, if you're using Blender, you can export as JLTF. And if you're using 3ds Max, you can use um, DataSmith. This way you can import and export. So you can export your uh, assets with textures and materials. And I spoke much more in depth at the beginning of today's stream. Guys, it's been almost three hours. I still didn't eat anything today. I have to go soon and get a couple of more questions. And if I could not get the chance to answer, leave your uh, questions in the comment as comments on this video. And in the next stream, I'm going to take a look. Great. I didn't find glass material in Quixel Bridge. Do you have any solutions for, to find good ones? Yes. So we have the glass materials from... Um, <clears throat> from uh, data math, they are actually good. So if you search, so let's click on the material here. So if you go to content browser, so let's open it. There are so many ways to create glass materials first. So that is something that keep in mind. Next, so if you go to engine content and we search here for data math, So let's actually type here. Can't remember where I found the the textures. Let's see, can we type here glass? Okay. If not in the engine content, maybe we can find it in the plugin content. Ha. So let's do that. I'm going to disable the plugin content. Ha. Okay. So go to the content browser, enable the plugin content and type glass. You will find these are the there are materials, so there is data math content, okay? And then there are materials, and you can find glass somewhere here. Just type glass, you can find this. And this is the material actually I'm using here because it works nicely with the raster translucency. So that's one. The second is if you download from the engine content from the Unreal Marketplace automotive materials. Okay, so if you go to Google and type automotive materials, Unreal Engine, go to the marketplace, you will find all these materials. And I believe we have lots of glass materials here. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And the easiest way to create a glass material is if you just um, rate, <coughs> sorry, let's see if I have something here. No. Give me a second.
Yeah, I hope this is useful, uh, Drake. Okay. I'm going to take two final questions and then I have to go. <laughs> one question. I have never used UE5. Can I take one of your courses and learn how to do interiors? Or do I need all kinds of other background on making models from other softwares like Blender, etc.? Rick. Um, so, okay. The courses I'm making or we're, the courses we are making now are focused on people with a background in 3D, whether in 3D as Max or Blender and like some some knowledge in the industry so you know how to navigate your way around. Uh, I do recommend really like having some knowledge in that, in like your tool of choice, whether Revit, SketchUp, any, any tool. And what I will be teaching, like when it comes to assets, when you have a project like Arcfist project and in that project there are many assets we have sofas chairs tables all these things it does not make sense to teach how I do all of these like one by one because then the course is gonna be like minimum of 80 hours right so the way I'm teaching I'm teaching all like what we're answering all the questions of course and <clears throat> like just like today and I use assets I use pre-made assets like this. I have a subscription on websites like Diamond Sevia. There is Aformotion, there is 3D Sky, there is CG Axis, and many others. And of course, I teach how to make... Yeah, so with considering that there are websites like this, with that said, I teach how to make the walls, how to prepare the meshes, how to fix the materials, and so on. I'm not... Yeah, so I do recommend learning a tool, 3D tool, to make the best out of these tutorials because ultimately you want to create different things and like unique stuff. And I cover as much as possible, like as much as possible of uh, the process, which is like the Unreal Masterclass, but now it's not Masterclass anymore. Um, for anyone in future, once we release the courses, if you buy the course, if you don't find it useful, you can contact me and I can also refund you. Like that's the worst case scenario. So Rick, I'm doing my best to cover almost everything, but there are things that it's impossible to cover, like doing the 3D modeling and like, uh, these type of things because it's out of the topic. So anything between, uh, 3D tools and Unreal Engine. I'm covering that, but doing 3D modeling, like on, on such meshes, no, if this is clear, um, yeah. <laughs> then ATTI is much better than 2060 in terms of performance. Ha, huh. good to know. I had some crash issues with UE5. I have GTX and ATTI. I solved the problem by following the instructions on this page since there no one, uh, even with my heaviest projects, no one, the, no problem even. Christian, did you share the page? Donovan, CG Axis also good assets, also got good assets. That's right, CG Axis are, in my opinion, um, are great uh, place for assets. There is also model plus model. Mohammed Basir, hi, what's your GPU? At the moment I'm using um, 3070 mobile on my uh, laptop, so that's my GPU. CGP is for us. <laughs> yeah, but ultimately you need to support uh, the people you're getting assets from. Felix, sorry, I tried to post a link twice previously and just realized neither my print screen or the link on the package I sent showed. Apparently you can't share links in chat. How? I need to take a look at the Maybe the chat settings, it might be YouTube doing something to the links. But thank you for letting me know because I think the same uh, uh, problem with Christian. If you can share the links with us on Discord, I really appreciate it. Emala, thank you, it works. Cast Shadow. Cast Shadow. Yeah, I'm glad it's it. I'm glad, guys. Good stuff. Sometimes doing things are easier than Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Wasn't expecting that. That's what it is, buddy. Like if I import sofa, that comes with, with in, 
if like if I import a sofa that come in so many pieces, no. So when you import an asset that is like this, it's so many pieces, like so. This is a group. If you collapse this or ungroup this, this has got five objects. You may need to attach these assets together, depending on the project complexity. But um, yes, Ashish. You can either export this as five objects or you can migrate them, merge them together to be one object. But I don't recommend merging a lot. Harshil, hey, I recently got a problem while importing a scene where Data Atmuth would always get stuck on 85% with different meshes names every time I try. Can you help me with that? Uh, Harshil, I would export my project in pieces. Then, in this case, if your uh, project is getting stuck, uh, what I mean, I would export, for example, the, the architectural elements of my projects alone, and then I export the furniture alone, and so on. And I can even export like rooms separately, um, living room alone, the bedroom alone, the kitchen alone, and so on. If you are going to export your project all at once, this will cause so many problems in so many, in so many ways. So try to export your uh, project into pieces, into chunks, that would hopefully help you solve this problem. How to merge all the meshes? Ashish, um, so in tool like Max, sorry, in tool like Max, you can just click attach and merge the meshes. In tool like Blender, I think you can select these and then press Ctrl J, join meshes, I think, the shortcut. Yeah, press Ctrl J to join meshes. And in Unreal, In Unreal, you can select the meshes. So one, two, three, four, and then you can go to the modeling mode. And under the modeling mode, when you have multiple meshes selected, we have an option called, where is it? Merge. Under mesh operations, you can merge. So I hope this is useful. All right, I wish I could speak Russian. I don't, let me translate this real quick. We're nearly done with the chat. This is the first time ever I finish a stream and I also finish the chat with it. <laughs> Hello, I didn't manage to make the American object disappear. Can you show me how, I think Google Translate is doing something. Can we detect language perhaps? Can you show me how to light up the light up? I, I don't understand. Harun, get out of here. I honestly didn't understand. Roslan. The translation is funny too. If I uh, understood correctly, hey, look at that guy. So, to hide meshes, if that's what I understood, if you right click any mesh, right click, we have something called visibility and you can hide or unhide meshes. For lighting your projects, if I also understood correctly, if you go to window, you can go to environment light mixer here you will find a couple of buttons that you can add to your project to create um, this setup. Suraba, I converted three mesh to nanite and lost materials. Have you ever in encountered this problem? So uh, nanite does not support um, foliage meshes. So objects like trees should not be converted into nanite. Uh, Sura, Surabe. Uh, don't convert uh, foliage meshes to, to nanite. They will not work, uh, probably. Spirus, Megascans has tons of great Arcvis textures. That's true. That is true indeed. Can man, Ramadan Karim. Thank you, Ramadan Karim, to you too, buddy. All right. 
Wigner, man, talk to me about your course, please. Um, so, guys, as for our course, we're recording this. It will be released during May. So, uh, there is a link to join the waiting list in the description of this video. And, Wigner, if you contact me on Discord, I will do my best to answer you. <clears throat> so, please contact me on Discord if you have any questions on the course. Or leave a comment on this video if you have any questions on the course as well. And I'm more than happy to help. Felix, thanks again for the help. Texture kernels solve the problem with tile size. I'm so glad I could uh, help, Felix. Obeda, I got you. Droid, thank you very much. My pleasure, man, for the glass material tips. My pleasure. I'm glad I could help. Robert, thank you, Habibi, for all the time you spent with us today. My pleasure, buddy. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for being here. I'm really glad that... We had this nice three hours together. Hello, I can't make a lit object that, so that it illuminates the scene. Can you show me how to light scene with a lighting materials UE5? Okay, this is the final question. Thank you for translating, Roslan. And I'm glad for the nanite tip. Speaking about the jobs available, I'm really interested. How can I apply? Abdulrahman, uh, Abdul Mamun Ibrahim, if you join us on Discord, uh, there will be under the where is it under the community section there will be news i'm going to post today we're going to post a new forum so this is for unreal engine 5 um did we close the vacancy date i think no it's still open but yeah for unreal engine 5 arcphys artists feel free to apply here we have us and we have our partners we will help you find jobs in the industry and you will help us finishing amazing projects and I also need an interior designer to help me on urgent projects. So if anyone can reach out to me on Discord on interior design, I would really appreciate it. And to take the final question, if you to, so how to create emissive materials in Android Engine 5, it is extremely simple. So how do we do that? We press Control Space and we go to a folder, just keep folders, right click, let's create a material and let's double click this material. I'm going to switch the, it's not necessarily, but for optimization purposes, you can always switch from default let to unlet. This is just, uh, so we have the emissive color here. Now let's press V to add the vector parameter and let's call this guy color. And let's add M, sorry, hold M, then click to add multiply node, then click S to add scalar parameter. And we can call this intensity. Let's connect this here and let's connect this here and let's connect both of these to the emissive color and let's click save of course give this a name call it m underscore emissive for example right and right click let's create a material instance and let's assign this material instance here right now let's open this material instance so this is guy this this is the one we can put the color we want. So let's change this color, for example, to yellow, yellowish, yellowish, something like this. And let's take, it's now still black, completely dark, because the intensity is set to zero. So if you set to intensity now to something like 10, Lumen will do its magic. That's what it is. <laughs> I hope you found this useful, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you for being here. Like the video share it share it with your family i think we we should reach 27 now 27 20 i forgot english let's celebrate did we reach 27k subscribers yet ah come on guys still need like 10 subscribers <laughs> quick question can you help me on discord with 3d panoramic captures in ue5 I have to get to work now. If you can share the question on our Discord community, then yes. However, not to do any spoiler alerts, I was trying to work just a couple of weeks ago with the, with the, in the plugins, the 360, the panoramic capture for some reason is not working with Unreal Engine 5 yet. So you may need either to wait for an update or something. I would search for quick uh, NVIDIA Ansel 
try if that will work. But yeah, share the question on our uh, Discord and I will take a look this evening, see if I could help. And yeah, guys, that's it. Thank you. Uh, I will see you very soon. For everyone who is interested in our Unreal Engine courses, check out the waiting list in the description and stay tuned. We will be releasing the new videos and the new files in the first week of May. I really thank you for your support. If you buy the courses, you allow us to make more of these live streams. This is how you can help us make more of these live streams, get more questions answered. And it's been a pleasure. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a, yeah, have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you soon. Take care, my guys. And bye-bye. Harun, come say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. <laughs> Cheers, guys.